Hey guys, Johnny here back with another Call of Duty Mobile video. Today we talk Battle Royale. I'm going to share with you guys all my tips to help you guys improve your game, win more often, and rank up faster. We're going to cover everything guys from the best class, the best loadouts, the best loot locations, the landing strategy, and we're going to go even deeper with the final circle strategy. So if you guys want to get better at Battle Royale and you guys want to get to Master 2 before the end of the season, this video is for you. Now before we start, I'm about to reach 50,000 subscribers on the channel and I have another giveaway for you guys. So if you guys are interested in winning some COD points to buy some crates or the next season's battle pass, all you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment below with your name or email. I will draw five winners on the day I reach 50k subs. One winner from five different videos including today's video, the two before and the two after. So good luck everyone and let's get started. Now first things first, should you play solo, duos or squads? Well obviously guys, playing solo has a bit of a risk because if you mess up early, there's no one to revive you and it can end up costing you a lot of points. So I really recommend you play at least with one person or with squads. Now first person or third person is personal preference, yes, but I still recommend you guys try first person because I heard there's a lot more real players in third person perspective. I know a lot of guys come from PUBG Mobile and now play COD Mobile and they're used to play third person. So maybe more real players and more better players in third person. So if you guys are struggling, you might give first person a try. Now what are the top class to use in Battle Royale? Well, of course it's gonna depend if you play solo or if you play with friends. But in my opinion, the top two are Scout and Mechanic. Personally, I use Mechanic more often. When I play solo, I always use Mechanic, but Scout is very good. A lot of players think Scout is better, but my decision to play Mechanic is I think if you get 1v1 in the final circle, I think Mechanic will win more often over Scout. It's very hard to play against. I know you can shoot it, but sometimes the delay is too short. And if you decide to shoot the mechanic, you're not going to be shooting your opponent. It's very annoying to play against. What these two skills have in common is they're going to help you spot your enemies. And it's all about having information and try to get to them before they get to you. Now, clown is a bit underrated. It's also very annoying to play against, but I think mechanic and scout are better. Now, if you play four man squad, I think it's a good idea to have a medic on the team. It's gonna help you regenerate your health and it's gonna prevent you from wasting adrenaline shots. The goal is to stay in between 100 and 150. And if you don't go below 100, the medic can heal you back up to 150. Airborne is another very good skill. If you play four man squads, it really helps relocating when you get near the final circles late in the game. Airborne is underrated. It's very good. It's very helpful. Strategically, it's gonna help you win more games. Trickster is the latest addition to the game. We still have to learn, but so far it's been looking really strong, even in solos. But still I would play Mechanic and Scout over Trickster for the reasons I mentioned previously. Trickster is not going to help you locate your enemies. It's just going to help you when you're in trouble. It's going to help you win 1v1 gunfights. But still, I prefer Mechanic and Scout. So if you play solos or duos, go with Mechanic and Scout. If you play four-man squads, I recommend Mechanic, Scout, Medic, and Airborne. The reason is Medic and Airborne will help the whole squad, but Ninja, Trickster, and Clown are more like single player. They help the player that uses it, but it's not really helping the whole team. Now let's go with the best looting spots and landing strategy. The best locations for early game loot are the spots in orange, yellow-ish on your map. So the Dock, the Nuclear Plant, Overgrown, and Countdown. These are the best loot locations because they give you more chances to get epic loot like level 3 vest, adrenaline shots and purple attachments and you also have a better chance to find legendary drops like the thermal scope arctic 50 and some legendary attachments. Now that doesn't mean you should go there every game. Now my best strategy for the early game and where you should land is don't jump right at the start. So I wouldn't go there on practice range, forest or countdown because there might be more players jumping up the plane early. So what I do is I usually wait and try to go in good spots, but later, like at the end of the flight. So in this situation, I would go probably nuclear plant or overgrown, maybe Sakura, but 
probably nuclear plant or overgrown. These are my favorite spots. So if the situation is right, I will go there. Now in another situation, if the plane will go from top to the bottom, I will probably go docks or countdown or something like that. But again, you have to use your judgment. And if you think everyone else doing that, well, you might go maybe nuke town or maybe standoff or something. So the more you play, you'll get better at deciding where you want to drop. Another useful thing to keep in mind is try to land where you know there's going to be a chopper. It's good to know the chopper locations. But there's one chopper pretty much on all the big locations, almost around the map. So Overgrown has one, Nuclear Plant, Sakura, Countdown. There's one on Kill House, there's one on Practice Range. You might find one on Estate. And then at the bottom, you have one on Nuketown, Pier, and you have two at the docks. So yeah, all around the map, you'll find choppers, sometimes two. Uh, and it's good to know because it really, really helps relocating fast. It helps getting to a point faster than anyone because you can go in a straight line compared to a road vehicle. So it helps chasing the airdrops. It helps get fast to the chip terminal for the upgrades. So early strategy is as soon as you drop, get a weapon ASAP. So land on a building or something and get a weapon because if someone lands near you and you don't have a weapon, you're pretty much dead. You cannot fight. So get a weapon ASAP and try to see if someone's near you. If you hear something or if you spot someone, at least you can fight. At the start of the game, you don't really get to choose what weapon you're going to use. You're going to have to use what they give you. The loot is random. You're not going to always find the same stuff at the same place. So just use what you find and then you'll have your favorite weapons and you'll start like trading something you like less for something you like more. Once you have a weapon, you'll be looking for a vest and some adrenaline shots. The adrenaline shot will bring your HP up from 100 to 150. So as soon as you can, heal up and you'll be in a better position to fight. Now your next job is to try to improve your loot, get better weapons, better vest, better attachments before the save zone starts shrinking. When the save zone starts shrinking, your first job is get into a chopper and go for one of the purple spots on the map to go upgrade your skill. The chip terminals are the white boxes. There's a bunch around the map, but they will be randomly active or inactive in some games. So you cannot always go at the same place, but once you get there, you can open it and pick up the purple upgrade. It's a chip upgrade. So your blue skill will turn purple and they will be better when upgraded. Around the same time is gonna be the time where the planes start dropping some air supplies. The airdrops are green spots on the map, green dots. So you can go there. Usually there will be some red smokes and you can see them drop if you follow the plane. So be aware other players will also go for the airdrops because that's where you get guaranteed awesome loot. It can be level 3 vest, it can be legendary weapons like the Thermoscope Arctic 50. So be careful when you go there. Make sure you're alone before you drop. If you see enemies, you might as well pass if someone got there before you because you don't want to take a stupid risk early. If you die early, you're gonna lose precious points. You might as well just skip and go to the next one. So at this point of the game, you have good loot. You should have good loot. You looted at the start. If you didn't get lucky, maybe you got lucky with the airdrops. I mean, if you really have bad loot, maybe you should go and try to keep looting on the edges of the map, but be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you don't go in a busy spot. If you hear gunshots, you know someone's around, so be extra careful. Now you need to look at the map and try to make a plan where you want to go next. Usually you have about two minutes, a minute and a half before the next safe zone is going to shrink. So you might go on the edge of the map just to think about what you want to do. Don't go in the middle and chill because if you're in the middle, People can come from anywhere, but if you're on the edge, like you know at least where your enemies can come from. Now what I like to do at this point is try to find a high ground. You want to go high ground so you see your enemies come to you. If you come from the bottom and you go attack enemies that are higher than you, they have a better position and it's going to be tougher to win your fight. So the dark spots on the map are usually bottom and the very light to white spots are higher grounds like mountains. Now when I get near the final circle or the last two circles, if I don't see a good mountain or if I think enemies are already in the mountain, maybe I'll go for a rooftop instead. You can go on a roof on a house or a building and try to get something with cover or angles 
so you can take cover if someone's shooting at you now remember guys the goal is not to get tons of kills the number one priority is a high finish you want to finish in the top five teams to get maximum points it's not so much about getting 20 to 25 kills yes the kills will give you points but the finish is much more important if you get 20 kills and you die like in number 35 you're gonna actually lose a lot of points or you may just win almost nothing but if you get two three four five kills but you win you're gonna get tons of points 30 plus 40 points sometimes so yeah go for the high finish don't take risks at the start and take risk when you're in the final five teams now what about the weapons what are the best loadouts there's a lot of possibilities guys there's a lot of good guns but there's also a lot of bad guns for battle royale msmc for example is a very good gun in multiplayer but it's very very strong at close range like in your face the deal with battle royale is you almost never have face-to-face -face combat usually it's medium long range battles and only in the final circle you might have face to face. I know it does happen from time to time, but not often enough to justify carrying an MSM senior loadout. With that being said, I still like to carry a shotgun. It's one of my favorite weapons and they're both good. The BY-15 and the Striker are two really good shotguns that are good having on you some guys will say the striker is better some guys will say the by is better i like both and i use both depending on the situations or depending on what i find sometimes i just find a striker and i'll carry the striker the thing i don't like about the striker is the reloading so when you get like 1v2 and you shoot a lot and then you have to reload it's really annoying so i like the by 15 but it's really situational and it's personal preference now for the second weapon it's good to have a sniper i love the arctic 50 it's the only good one in battle royale the other snipers are not worth carrying so you might go with an lmg instead maybe if you don't find it and the thermal scope uh, arctic 50 that you find in the airdrops is actually even better uh, it's gonna help you spot your enemies in the distance it's really strong now the thing that i like about the shotguns is the ammo management you rarely run out of ammo with shotguns because they don't use that much if you use ars like the ak-47 or ak-117 you're gonna end up shooting a lot more and ammo could be a problem but i think it was more a problem in season one in season two i think the bots are carrying tons of ammo i often see bots with 200 plus bullets of 556 for the ak117 so i started using more ars in season two over shotguns because they're more maybe versatile so i really love the ak117 now so if i have a choice this is gonna be my number one weapon and usually my second one will be arctic 50. now of course in some situations you would have loved to have a rocket launcher or a LMG instead of the sniper, but I still like to use the sniper very often. But guys, the loadout is kind of personal. There's a lot of good stuff, but the best ones, in my opinion, AK-117, uh, AK-47 is actually very strong also, and Type 25. So probably my number one weapon would be one of these three ARs. And then ASM-10, I don't know. It's not the fastest fire rate. M4 is pretty solid. Uh, there's a lot of good ones, but M16 I don't like, MSMC I never use, and the Chicom I never use. Now SMRS is a good choice over the sniper. If you don't like snipers too much, you might want to try carrying this as a second weapon. It's good to destroy vehicles, but it's also got good splash damage, so in end circles it might give you some wins. So I think that's pretty much it guys. We covered pretty much everything. We covered the best classes, the starting strategy, the landing, the best looting locations, the best weapons, best loadouts. So I think I gave you pretty much all my tips to help you guys play better and win more often. But remember guys, the most important thing is the finish, not the number of kills. If you want to go in the middle of the map and try to get 25 kills, often you're going to die early and it's going to end up costing you more points in the long run. So I say you should go for the wins not for the kills so i think that's it for today guys thank you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed the video if it was helpful please hit the like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more call of duty mobile i will be back later until then watch my other videos take care